Hi, I'm Ishan from Fun FTC, and we're here today with Team 18219 Primitive Data from California. They're here at the MTI competing with their newly built turret robot. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. Giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting fun so we can continue to make content for you. Stryker makes some of the most revolutionary medical equipment and is a big supporter of FIRST and its participants. If you are looking for an internship or a career that supports you being in FIRST, check out careers.stryker.com to learn more. AFTC hey, fans, are you ready for Freight Frenzy? Join us after kickoff live all weekend, September 18th and 19th, as we'll be out at Kettering University for the Bulldogs Robot in 30 Hours at youtube.com forward slash first updates now. You'll get detailed breakdowns of game elements, the field, and prototyping and testing of robot components and assemblies. Watch live, view short videos after, and ask questions for the Kettering team at youtube.com forward slash first updates now. Starting out with your intake, what's the sort of stuff that went into your design? You got a pretty unique looking intake. Looks like it's got some side scoopers. Could you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, so when we first designed our intake, uh, we were really focusing on just picking rings up off of the floor. And then as the game evolved, we saw a lot of teams were having a lot of success with uh, picking up rolling rings from the return rack. This is virtual, of course. Uh, so we added this on top of a roller. So what this will do is this will knock the rings down when they're rolling towards the robot. And then the roller will allow us to pick the rings up. And we also have these two funnels on either side you can flip up here. And what they'll do is these will just spin. And when they spin, they'll help us uh, funnel rings into the center of the intake a bit faster. Something else that's cool about our intake is we designed it so that it can flex because uh, we were preparing for the MTI and we thought that we were going to be running into a lot of other robots. Uh, so we wanted to make it so that if we run into something else, it's not going to snap or break. So what, what sort of uh, materials did you use to make it flex? Uh, we're using acetyl for the whole intake. Awesome. All right. Um, and so then after it gets into your intake, what's the transfer mechanism look like? Um, so the transfer mechanism uses a uh, three um, sort of grippy, I, I forget the term for them, but they're a grippy band that you might have on your wrist. Um, and we have a crowned roller on the bottom and a normal roller on the top. And this allows our rings to go up on the bottom roller, which is, um, it has some handlebar grip tape that you might have on a bike. And it travels up these, um, up the bands, and it's funneled by um, acetyl and PLA funnels that makes it go into the, the center of the robot, where it's then transferred into our magazine. Great, you want to talk a little bit about your magazine? You've got a really cool mechanism to lift them up and that's one of the hardest parts to do in a turret. So how did you get that transfer from the intake, those belts into the turret? All right, so our magazine, initially on our first design, we just had a flat plate that would lift into the robot and it would shoot the rings flat into our angled shooter. It worked all right, but the problem was that it would take a lot of energy out of our shooter and we'd have to slow it down. So what we've done this year is, let me, let me move it up. Um, we have a separate plate uh, that rotates on top of our magazine and it's powered by a servo. So what that means is that our mag will always be aligned with the turret wherever we're rotating and this lets us shoot the rings a bit faster. Awesome, and so you found that you're using less energy with something that works yeah, up yeah. at that Yeah, we've been angle. able to shoot way more consistently and uh, with less of an interval in between. Really cool. Now talking about your shooter, you got it on a turret. How did you get that turret mechanism? What, what sorts of control are you using for that? Also, you got two, two motors, Flywheel, talk a little bit more about your design process for your turret. All right, so I'll start with the actual turret mechanism. So we've got one go build a motor. Um, it's driving an 18, 18 tooth pulley, and then it goes, and it's belt driven around a massive pulley that goes all the way around our shooter so that we can feed rings up into the center. Um, so what this means is that when the motor drives, we can rotate the whole turret. It might be hard to see, but the way that we're actually uh, we have the turret set up is on a stack of bearings. So we have a thrust bearing on the bottom, a radial bearing in the center, and then another thrust bearing on top. And this allows the turret to rotate uh, really smoothly. And we can also, you know, we don't have to buy something off the shelf. We can make our own diameter. And I think Ben is going to talk about the shooter. Uh, so one big part of our shooter design is we wanted to keep everything nice and compact so we could reduce the rotational inertia of our turret and make it as fast as possible. Um, so we use two motors, um, they're bare motors, and then we have a uh, two to one round belt ratio, driving two um, Bane bots, 
blue wheels um, with an aluminum ring for added inertia when we're shooting. Um, and as Cooper said, the magazine positions the rings um, right next to the wheels, and then we use a uh, super speed servo in the back to push the rings into the wheels and launch them out. And of course, we have um, a flap here so that we can adjust the angle at which the rings are launched out and score in both the high goal and the mid goal from any distance. Awesome. So you did something really cool, which was open odometry. You've evolved on it over time. Do you want to show us open odometry on your robot and talk a little bit about some of the improvements that you've added? Yeah, sure. So open odometry was something that we worked on last summer, and it's been a year since its release. Um, but one thing that we really wanted to improve about it was just the overall rigidity and strength in preparing for MTI with robots clashing into each other. So instead of the standard PLA or PETG or ABS um, panels that you'd find on open odometry or any open o o odometry module, we've replaced it with 6061 1/8 inch aluminum. And as you can see, these pods simply cannot move. I'm shaking the whole cart, trying to flex them or move them along the standoff. So this has really helped our odometry accuracy. Awesome. Really cool robot, really clean looking, awesome turret design. You all have been killing it out on the field. Really looking forward to see you play your matches next uh, tomorrow and then in the future. Best of luck to you and we'll see you all next time. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting this video. Stryker is looking for current and future FIRST alumni to join their internship program and FIRST mentors who are looking for a great career with a company who actually supports their FIRST journey. Go to careers.stryker.com to learn more. You can also directly support FUN by joining FUN Nation. Click the Join button and just for a few bucks a month, you'll unlock special perks and directly support us so we can keep making great content. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.